Today we're coming to you from my kitchen where I'm going to show you how to make spaghetti sauce specifically tweaked and altered for effective freeze drying. I'm Evan Rowell and this is Critical Thinking. Now, there's no shortage of people on the internet that will show you how to make spaghetti. There's recipes everywhere. Uh, they'll show you how to freeze dry it. They'll show you how to rehydrate it, or at least how they think it should be rehydrated. But I'm here to tell you that there are more things that you need to consider when it comes to freeze drying and making spaghetti, uh, packaging it efficiently, and especially being able to rehydrate it so that you've got a good spaghetti sauce. In other words, you got spaghetti sauce that is as good, or spaghetti, I should say the whole spaghetti meal, that is as good and tasty and fresh as it was before you freeze dried it. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now I have everything here that I use to make spaghetti sauce with, and I'm, I'm not here to particularly to give you a recipe because, you know, your recipe is going to be as good as anybody else. Everybody's got a favorite spaghetti sauce recipe. Okay, so I'm not here to give you a recipe. What I'm here to do is to tell you how you need to tweak things to make the spaghetti sauce so that it will freeze dry effectively and how you can package it so that when it comes time to use it, you'll be able to make enough spaghetti out of one package to feed four adults or two adults and six kids. Okay, and that's very possible if you do it right. The difference between using regular ground beef and lean ground beef can be the difference between it storing for five years versus 25 years. You can use regular ground beef that will shorten its shelf life by a lot. So when I cook spaghetti, and I'm specifically going to design it for freeze drying, what I do is I buy this. I've got five pounds of stew meat. Okay, and what I do with the stew meat is I use my KitchenAid meat grinder and I'll grind my own hamburger. Now I have two packages of this, but my spaghetti sauce, I like to incorporate sausage into it. Now if I'm going to make spaghetti sauce that I'm going to eat right away, well, I'll get regular pork sausage already made at the store. But if I'm going to um, make spaghetti sauce with the intention that I'm going to freeze dry it for long-term storage, I use turkey sausage. And the reason is, is I like the spices in sausage. So about one third of the meat that I will cook will be sausage. And in this case, it'll be turkey sausage. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and grind that up and I'm going to turn on uh, this pot. Now you see, I have two pots here. I have a large one and I have this one here. Now I'm going to cook my meat in this one so that I can drain off any fat that, that might still be in it, okay? And then when I get ready to make the spaghetti sauce, I'll transfer the meat and the, the tomato sauce and the seasonings and the cheeses and everything else I use into this pot. So with that, give me just a moment and I'll grind up the meat. Okay, so here you have it. I've ground up five pounds of very lean beef. I, I love using that stew beef because it, they always cut it very, very lean. And when you make it into hamburger, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to be tender. You are going to lose a little bit of volume. Now, this thing is completely full. This, this KitchenAid bowl is completely full. And that may look like a lot, but it's not really, because by the time you finish cooking it and draining it, you're going to lose about a quarter of that volume. So the pan is heated up. And I don't use any oil sprays in it. I don't use any butters. I don't use anything in there. This goes in the pan and I just keep it stirred up. Now I've got the heat turned down really low so that it can kind of simmer while I show you something else. So with that, I'm gonna put uh, all eight pounds into there, kind of mix it around and let it get started, okay? You put the lid on it and it'll be great, okay? All right. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to talk to you about the way most people will do spaghetti. Most people will do spaghetti absolutely wrong, for long-term storage, that is. Now, what they'll do is they'll cook the spaghetti, and then they'll make the spaghetti sauce, and they'll mix it all together, and then they'll put it in their pans. And they might have, you know, four pans if they've got the medium-sized freeze dryer, like I do. So I have four pans, and I have, I have an extra set of pans here. Now, I went ahead and cooked um, 24 ounce package of spaghetti and I have it right here 
and this is going to be dinner tonight. But there's no way that my wife and I are going to eat a full 24 ounces of spaghetti. That's a lot of spaghetti. That thing's filled up to about there. Okay, but I want to demonstrate something to you. If you take the spaghetti out and you start to fill the pan with it, I can get maybe two handfuls in there. Because remember, you're going to have spaghetti sauce taking up some volume with this also. All right, so there you have it. I have enough spaghetti left in here easily to fill up two more pans, maybe three. I might be able to fill up all four pans with the spaghetti that came from this one bag of spaghetti noodles. Okay, that's not very efficient. You need to understand that the, the whole idea behind long-term food storage is to pack food as efficiently as possible so that you can get the most out of it when the time comes. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in there. And I'm going to go ahead and start making the spaghetti, the spaghetti sauce that is. Now, I, I like chunky spaghetti sauce. Okay, so I've got here, I've got chopped up bell peppers, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, onions, and mushrooms. That's going to go into the sauce. Okay, and then because I've got eight pounds of meat, I've got six spaghetti seasoning packets. Okay, I've got plenty of tomato sauce, I've got diced tomatoes, I've got tomato paste, I've got um, melting cheese, this is Velveeta, and I use about a pound of that. And then because the meat, uh, because I drain the meat, it is, it is so lean, and because even then I drain off everything I can, it's going to lose some flavor because, like it or not, uh, when you drain off all the fat, and if you don't have any fat in your meat, you don't have any flavor. So what I do is I will add um, bouillon, okay? This is a liquid bouillon, and I found it to be the best one. I, I don't like the, the really dry one. I put red cooking wine. All right, I'll probably for this, I'll probably use probably most of this bottle. Okay, I use fresh garlic. And then here's something that might blow you away. It did when I first um, heard about it, but when I tried it, I'll tell you what, it was great. See this grape jelly? I put grape jelly in my spaghetti sauce. Not a lot. I'll put maybe two heaping tablespoons of grape jelly in this much. I might, well, as a matter of fact, for this much, I might put it many as three or four because this is going to be a lot. But what that does is that takes the edge off the vinegars that put, you put into it, off the sherries and the, and the salts and everything. It just kind of acts as a solidifier. So grape jelly in your spaghetti sauce. So with that, give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. All right, the sauce has been made, um, the tomato part of it anyhow. I put in the cheese, I put in the, the cooking sherry, the, the grape jelly, the bouillon and everything else. And into this pot, the meat has been thoroughly cooked. I've added the red peppers, green bell peppers, a little bit of pepper flake, the garlic, and the onions. Now, just so you'll know, there were two large green bell peppers, there were two large red bell peppers, and there was one huge yellow onion, two full garlic bulbs. The flavor is just amazing. And this does the spaghetti seasoning from the packets in it, this does. So we're gonna go ahead and combine the two now. This meat I drained literally by putting it in that red colander. Okay, I drained it completely of all of its juice and, and even now we're getting a little bit more, which is okay. But the idea again is to make sure that you have plenty of seasoning in here. Because, you know, the rehydration process, most people, they, they're gonna tend to lose a little bit of the flavor anyhow. I've had people in total disbelief that the spaghetti was ever freeze dried. I'm gonna mix that completely up. And, oh, I, I just wish you could smell. Oh, and I know, because I, I make this quite often, my family loves it, I've actually won church awards for this stuff. There is oh, one more thing that I'm going to put into here, a couple of packets of the Suzanne Goya powder. But anyhow, this needs to sit for a little while. So see you in an hour. Okay, the marinating is over. I went ahead and I filled up three of the pans with the sauce only. And there was enough sauce left over. I could have filled that whole pan up, 
But I went ahead and I dumped the sauce into the spaghetti that I had already cooked and it's about, still about that full, plus everything in here. So you can see that what I have got right here in this pan and in my hand is all of this and all of that. Okay, exactly the same amount, but because the spaghetti was cooked, it took up four times as much space as I've got here. And I'll, uh, I'll show you exactly how I package that later. I've already weighed each one of these. Now this is important also. If you're going to be serious about freeze drying, you have to know how much water each tray loses. Now these trays are pretty full. Each one of these trays has about three and a half to three and three quarters pounds worth of food. And that's a lot, as a matter of fact. If I had this much weight with a lot more moisture, then you could actually stall the freeze dryer where you'd get so much ice on the inside of the barrel that it would stop the, the sublimation process. I'm sure that I have the maximum amount of food here that should be put into that freeze dryer. These four trays will take anywhere from 55 to 60 hours to complete. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in the freezer. Now, you'll notice that one of these I have the cooked noodles, and here I am saying, ah, oh, you, you, you really shouldn't, yada, yada. But there is one instance where you want to freeze dry the spaghetti completely cooked. And I got this off of another YouTube uh, YouTuber that was uh, making spaghetti, and he cooked his spaghetti, and he mixed it, and he put it in here. And then he pulled out the neatest little device that he made himself, and that was um, a divider. And he made it so that he could physically separate that spaghetti into eight equal sections. And I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna put that in here. Now this, this I, I made this device myself. I went down to Home Depot and I bought one inch by one eighth inch aluminum. And I manufactured these little separators here that fit right down into there. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the freezer and then tomorrow morning, I will put them in the freeze dryer, and a couple days later, uh, they'll come out. So I'll see you then. All right, so here we are. Uh, we're downstairs in my um, packaging table, and I have successfully freeze dried um, all that spaghetti sauce and this spaghetti here. I went ahead and prepackaged some of it um, so that I could uh, show you what it looks like after it's packaged. I'm gonna go ahead and package this and these sections of spaghetti, and we're going to put those in these seven mil uh, one pint Mylar bags. But before I do that, I have to, in the spirit of true confessions, tell you what happened, and I actually had to run this through two cycles. And the reason for that was that I got overzealous and I filled these trays too full. And I think I mentioned earlier that I knew that they were full, but because in the past I had uh, successfully done uh, four trays of spaghetti sauce, I didn't think that was gonna be a problem. But this time it was a problem. I came down here, I went into, and I looked at the freeze dryer and there was a layer of water behind the plexiglass door, which means that the ice on the inside of the barrel was beginning to melt. And then I looked up at the vacuum and it had risen to 1800 millitores from around 600 where it should have been. So I knew exactly what had happened. So I shut the whole system down and I opened it up and here are some pictures of what I found. You can see the ice on the left side uh, was in, you know, towards the bottom, was coming in contact with the trays. And mind you, these pictures uh, were taken um, after the freeze dryer had sat for several hours fighting with the refrigeration unit and melting the ice. So the ice that you're seeing here in these pictures is probably about a third of the ice that was actually in there to begin with when the ice come in contact with the heated trays. And what happens, it begins to pull some of the heat off of the trays and melt the ice. And then what that does is that raises the humidity inside the freeze dryer. And so your vacuum pump starts pulling excess water in. And what that does 
is that lowers the efficiency of the vacuum pump. And so your, my vacuum went from around 600 millitors all the way up to 1800. And then that just exacerbated the problem of the ice melting and the distribution of the heat because the vacuum was going down. The refrigeration unit couldn't keep up and the whole thing failed. And so what I did was I pulled the trays out, defrosted the whole unit. I actually put a fan on it to uh, accelerate the defrosting process. I pulled the shelving out of it. I pulled all the ice out of it. You can see how much, how thick that ice was on the bottom, especially. And it was, it had come up and made contact with the bottom of that tray and it was just causing all kinds of problems. So after I'd got all the ice out of it and cleaned it all up and everything, I put the trays back into it and it, uh, you know, I started the process up again. Now it took me 52, I think it was around 52 hours for me to discover that there was a problem. And after I got the, uh, the whole thing put back together and I restarted the cycle in a new cycle, it took another 22 hours to completely dry it. But it didn't damage the pump, it didn't damage the freeze dryer. Um, and the food, the spaghetti sauce, as you can see here, is absolutely dry. It's just as dry as can be. It'll, it'll crumble up all over the place if I let it. So with that, um, I also decided to make a few other changes with what I had said earlier. I got to thinking, you know, when I cooked that 24 ounce bag of spaghetti, it filled this thing about, oh, two thirds. Okay, now that's a lot of spaghetti for two people. And by the time I put about this much spaghetti sauce in with it, it filled that pan almost full of spaghetti that, you know, this spaghetti that, that was mixed like this. And I thought, well, that, that's just too much. And so what I've decided to do, instead of making one meal out of one pan, I've broken it in half, and then I use smaller bags of spaghetti. These are the 16 ounce size, okay? And this is what I end up with. It's, it's vacuum packed. You can see the spaghetti right here. You can see the outline of it. And then you see the spaghetti sauce is right here, okay? And when I pull this off the shelf, when the day comes that I want to use it, I can assure you that this will make enough spaghetti that it will, it will fill this pot completely up. And I'll have a meal here for a family of six, two adults and four children. Or, you know, if you really like spaghetti, you could feed um, four adults if you got really heavy eaters. But, and that's all in one bag. And I can assure you that if you were to cook your spaghetti noodles first and mix the sauce in with it and freeze dry it this way and then try to bag it up, instead of one bag, for every one bag I have here, I can assure you, you'd have three bags and maybe even four, okay? Because, you know, that cooked spaghetti takes up a lot of room. And the idea is to be efficient and, you know, to think critically about things and, and how you're gonna do it and, and not only what you're doing now, but you want to think about what you're going to be faced with if the time ever comes when you need to uh, pull one of these out and make use of it. Now, with that, all, oh, also, um, I didn't do just spaghetti. This one here has elbow macaroni in it. It's one of these packages right here. It's a, again, it's a 16 ounce package, but you can see um, it's right here on this side. And then the uh, spaghetti sauce is in a um, freezer bag and it's on this side okay and then I pull a vacuum on it and again that's going to make a lot of spaghetti in a very very compact situation so what I do now let's go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and do one of these oh and also then I get creative too um, on one of these I'm going to use this penne I think that's how you pronounce it uh, these little barrel um, pasta I, this is it right here, and what I've done is I've, I've cut the instructions on exactly how to cook this stuff, and I've included it right here in the bag. So um, this is one I'm going to do right now, and uh, a spaghetti, but we'll go ahead and start with the spaghetti. I have the large bag pre-filled out, spaghetti sauce and uncooked spaghetti noodles. I have the date on it and over and the instructions in the back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead 
and I'm going to take, let's see if I can find one here. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm going to take a uh, freezer bag, and I'm going to start with this one right here. This is a slightly larger one, and that's the one I, do, I want to do with the spaghetti. And what I do with these is I take and I break them in half this way. And they do, they break, they break right apart, okay? And then I'll set those sections in there. And the reason I do that is I like to have the flat side um, out with the, uh, these pieces here, I'll turn upside down so that the flat side is out. So when I vacuum pack them, none of those sharp edges there are going to be trying to poke through the Mylar bag. So anyhow, there I have all that in there. I'll go ahead and close it up. Oh, one more thing, you don't want to forget this, is I have to put an oxygen absorber, and I put the oxygen absorber right in with the sauce, because that's what has the meat in it. And close this up. Now, when I put this in the bag, I'm going to vacuum pack it, and because I'm going to vacuum pack it, I need to poke some holes in it so that... So that this, the air will evacuate out of this bag. So I just go along and I, I poke some holes in it. It's okay because, you know, they're not going to use it. They're not going to rehydrate it in this bag. So what will happen now is that spaghetti sauce will go in the Mylar bag. And it will tuck tightly to one side. And then I take the spaghetti. And it's... It just doesn't make any sense to cook this spaghetti first. I mean, it's flat, it's compact, it's laid side by side, and all I have to do is go along and, and, and poke a few holes in it so that the air will escape out of it when I go to vacuum pack it. And it sits in that bag right next to the sauce. And for me, that, it, that just makes so much more sense to do it this way. Now. Let's go ahead and set this out of the way. And I'm going to put this bag on there. And again, I, you don't want your wrinkles on it. So when I put it on there, and you clamp it down, it grabs it at this corner. And then I'm able to pull, and that'll pull any wrinkles out of it. And then I'll seal it. Okay. So now that's a very well sealed bag. I'll inspect the seal and it's, uh, it's a good sealed bag. You take the scissors, cut just along that corner, so I got a little tiny opening right there. Take my trusty vacuum needle, hooked up to my vacuum pump down there, and I can shove it in that little tiny opening. It's, uh, it can be a little bit difficult, but it takes a little bit of patience. And there you can see it going into there. Now watch this thing when I turn on the vacuum pump. Look at that. Enough spaghetti and sauce in here to feed a family of six, and it's in one bag and because I vacuum packed it it'll fit tightly on a shelf and it'll minimize the amount of space it takes to store this. Okay so I'm gonna let this sit for about a minute. I'm gonna speed things up here a little bit. Okay it's been about a minute so I'll take and I'll quickly I'll pull that needle out of there and holding it with my thumb so I don't lose my vacuum. I go ahead and make sure that I've got a nice flat surface here to work with when I put it on the sealer. I put it on the sealer, seal off that corner so that uh, the vacuum won't escape. That's a good seal and there you got it. 
okay there's um, 25 at least 20 maybe 25 years that that will sit on a shelf and that will be just fine do this so not now for the spaghetti this worked out really good it divided those <laughs> that spaghetti up into these little squares and got some loose stuff on top and so I use these bags right here they're seven mil again I like I've mentioned in the past I don't like to use anything but seven mil bags I don't trust anything smaller than that and these are standalone bags and what I how I do these is you'll see the space where that zip sealer that that zip seal is and the top of the bag I'll put a hole exactly halfway between there and the top of the bag and I'll, I'll do it off to one side a little bit and the reason I do that you'll see here in a minute so I'll take that and then I'll take an oxygen absorber toss it in there and then I'll take two of these and I'll actually crush them down a little bit but you can't fit two of these in this bag and you know bits and pieces and whatnot but um, two of them the contents of two of those will go down into that bag I've already done it twice over there and yes I'm a typical guy I don't know how to do things like this without making somewhat of a mess so anyhow, oh, da, 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 da. these are great for backpacking. I'll tell you what, um, and you can do. You don't have to do just spaghetti sauce, but um, if you if you do it this way, you can uh, you can effectively. Um, make backpacking supplies. Now I'll, I'll seal this down from this side over a little bit and I'll seal it down from this side over but I'll leave that middle open a little bit. Okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this bag right along this outside edge above that hole. And uh, you'll see why I'm going to do that here in a minute. Okay, so now that bag is sealed, but it's not vacuum packed. Now, if you're if you're doing this for um, backpacking and hiking and stuff like that, you don't really need to to vacuum pack it unless you're trying to save space. But with that hole that I made, I'm able to stick my needle in there. turn this on and you can just see that thing sucking that right down leave it on for you don't need this one for a minute because it's so small but um, leave it on for 15 20 seconds and that and that is just that's just as hard as a rock okay now when you've completely drawn the vacuum then you can run your finger along there and push that seal closed. Now that seal will hold the vacuum for a, a, a little while, a, a few minutes only, but um, now I'm going to want to seal that hole off. And how I do that is now I'm going to seal above that zip line and below the hole. And that is going to isolate the vacuum from the hole. And there you have it. Perfectly. And you can see I've done three. Um, I'll go ahead and, and do those after I'm done here. So there you have it. This is how I vacuum pack. And not just spaghetti, but... Um, everything I do the way I figure it there's no point in vacuum packing something or, or cooking something that's already dry if you're just going to turn right around 
and freeze dry it. It just doesn't make any sense. So I package things for efficiency so that the day comes, I don't have to run in there if I want spaghetti and I don't have to say, well, I need three packages of spaghetti to fill, you know, to feed everybody that I'm going to uh, feed or run in there and say, well, okay, here's a package with a sauce and then run over and, and here's the package with the cooked noodles on it and, 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 and have to find all kinds of different packages and, and um, different things so that you can cook dinner. I like having everything in one package. So that's how I do spaghetti sauce. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that, watching me do that. I, I hope you've uh, learned something. And I hope you'll subscribe because every time I do a different type of food, um, um, a, a different recipe, I'm going to make a video, kind of a, a short video, showing exactly um, what I freeze dry, what I don't freeze dry, how I put them together, and uh, some of the other little uh, tips and tricks and, and what have you on how to do that. So if you're, if you're an avid freeze dryer or if you're thinking about it, subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell and share. And as usual, uh, I'd appreciate it very much if you'd um, visit my gallery. Being a professional photographer, I love when people look at my work and tell me what they like and um, tell me what I should be pursuing. And with that, I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking.